and welcome to our instructional video on how to repair your refrigerator that is failed to cool. And uh, a lot of times you'll see the light is on, but uh, nobody's home. No, actually the refrigerator is not cooling, but the light's still on. Well, there's some parts that could fail, and they're very inexpensive parts. And the front of your refrigerator should look like this. We've removed the door for ease of this video and the parts that you're going to be replacing are in the back and they look like this. They're very two very small simple pieces. So we'll be replacing those. We're going to recommend that you get a licensed refrigeration person and or a um, electrician to replace this for you. Okay so here we are in the back of the refrigerator. You want to make sure that you have a qualified person working back here because you've got electricity and heat uh, that could harm you. First thing you want to make sure is that your power plug is out. Please make sure it's off and unplugged. The items that we're going to re be replacing in this video are the thermal overload switch, which looks like just like a little piece of plastic, and um, this is what trips off when the pump is cycled a few times and then it times out to protect the cooling pump which you see right here. The other item we're going to re be replacing is the start relay. This has a connector here and a couple of push-in holes here that are going in to the side of the cooling pump. So that's what we're going to do. So one or more of these components that we showed you could fail. So what we're going to do is uh, send you a kit that you'll be able to replace both of them at once and uh, remove all doubt. Um, if you replace these and it still fails and maybe your pump is bad, uh, that's pretty much about the only thing it could be. This also here, if you're wondering what this is, this is a drip pan. It actually comes off, so you could take it off for convenience, just, just slides out, fits on top. The water from the condensation from the refrigerator sits in here and it just drips in there and the heat of the pump and everything causes it to evaporate. So what we're going to do now with it unplugged is we're going to remove this set screw that's in here and we're going to carefully remove this cover. Now this cover may have a screw or it may have a clip and if you can see back here it's a little clip that clip uh, fits over the top of that cover, one or the other. When you pull this out, you'll notice that there's a channel that the wires sit in. So when you put them back, you've got to make sure you put them in that same way. Also, this thing is in a very uh, specific place. So you've got to make sure that those sit there because the entrance to this is very limited in how it sits and holds things in. You notice that this thermal switch right here, or the thermal thing, is sitting and pressed up right against the pump because it senses the heat. So pulling these wires off, uh, you'll probably want to take a picture of this if, if uh, you're at all concerned. This uh, black switch, starter switch, is connected with a V-plug, if you'll notice. One plug fits in and it's, it serves two uh, connectors because you only see that you'll see that this only has one pin on it. So sometimes you could pull it out with a pair of pliers, but I actually think it's better that you just wedge a screwdriver in there and, and pull it out. It's a lot safer that way and you won't pull the connector out. And all you do is push this one back in. And it's important that you keep your wire straight. Now the red one here, same thing. This slides out. There's three pins here, one, two, three, that go into the motor, okay, and this one goes on the top of the triangle. So again, we just pull this one out, put the new one in. The new one's physically in a different place, it's just off to the side, but it's still the same part. So we take this piece with the two holes, and we put it below it. And essentially, we're done with putting the parts in. Now we've just got to position all the wires so the cover will go on well. And that can be kind of tricky, so take your time when you're doing it and really don't force it.
Okay, so once you've uh, completed things or you just want to check out how a normal running refrigerator sounds, uh, this is the sound. I'm just going to turn it on right now and you'll hear it. You'll hear the pump running normally. You can feel the hot and cold on either side and um, you don't hear any groaning or anything like that. Just working away. Starting to cool your refrigerator. That's it. So that pretty much wraps it up for replacing those simple components and bringing your refrigerator back to 100% working condition. Remember, after you plug it back in, uh, it should start right away because you've taken more than five minutes. But if, remember, if you plug it in and unplug it and then plug it back in, you'll need to wait a full five minutes for it to cycle. Your telltales will be you'll hear a short click after about 15 or 20 seconds, and in about five minutes it should cycle and start just as good as normal. Thanks, and enjoy your refrigerator.